A lot of news, a lot of news. Interesting news. Um, we got Peacemaker news. They broke some records. Um, more Patrick Stewart talk about him being in Doc Strange or him not being in it or in it. I don't know, but come on. After that whole Spider-Man fiasco, we already know what the deal is, man. Um, watch the Helm Secret uh, Star Wars film. That could be Kevin Feige's project right there. Could be. Um, Toy Leaks, Doctor Strange 2. I don't. I didn't see it, Brian. I don't know if you saw it. And, well, we got Doctor Strange 2, and I we got Thor Love and Thunder as well. So, Toys? Toys. Shaking my head, man. They're the bane of my existence now for some <laughs> um, some There's some Wolverine rumor for Doctor Strange 2. I mean, I, I expected this quite some time ago. I expect it to be Hugh Jackman, but we'll talk about that as well. Um, Brie Larson says that the Marvels, because she's read the script, I, I think she was referring to the script, correct? Well, they finished shooting it, so I hope she's read the script. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Wow, they finished shooting. So she says that the Marvels is bonkers. We'll talk about that. Um, there's been up some update on the Craven, some casting uh, yep. news. Um, Blade, we're starting to see the pieces um, for that film. Um, some announcement from Paramount uh, regarding Star Trek, which was weird. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they have some relationship with Warner Brothers in terms of announcing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that people weren't on board with in the first place. Um, and uh, the Netflix Marvel series are, are set for Disney Plus, but I believe in Canada. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about what may happen with those seasons of the, for those characters from the Netflix uh, platform. First up, Peacemaker set some new... HBO Max record, man. I can't say a surprise, Brian, because I have heard a lot of people really do like this show. I saw the whole thing. Um, still didn't like the show. I like some aspects of the show, definitely. I like some of the characters. But overall, I just wasn't a fan of it. Um, this was supposed to be, in my eyes, I look at, at it as a, a superhero comedy. But there was no comedic aspect to it that I found humorous. You know, you go to a comedy show, if you don't laugh, you pretty, you, if you don't laugh and, and you don't find a humorous, you probably didn't enjoy yourself. Um, and this for me was that. It wasn't, for me, it wasn't comedy. For some people, it was. It was and that's okay. Um, but Brian, I don't, I don't think you've seen the 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 season. Uh, you know, I'm not going to hate. I mean, I think I take the positive, which is it shows it shows that the genre still has ground to cover. And so, you know, I'm I'm always I'm always like James Gunn tapped into something with in a weird way, tapped into something far more with this show than he did with his film. Very clearly, right? I mean, very yeah. clearly, right? I mean, yeah. People have gravitated to this show in a way they did not support the Suicide Squad in totality in, in a movie. Yeah. So I think that's great. Um, he obviously has some pull with the DC stars because, spoiler alert, some pretty big cameos. Um, yeah. So they they wanted a piece of that. So I think it's great. I think it's great that they've got, they found an audience. It means we're going to get more Peacemaker, um, which I'm sure will make a lot of people happy. It's, you know, I've kind of did, like, I've sort of settled on like James Gunn. It's just never going to be like my favorite cup of tea. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, and it's like, I, I, it's like Terrence Malick, I don't get, he's a genius. Quentin Tarantino, I enjoy. I am not, you know, rabidly passionate about his work as some people yeah. are, but I respect the, the skills. Yes. On the other side, I, Enjoy Michael Bay with no apologies. <laughs> so sue me. That's my taste. Everyone's got yeah. different taste. You know, and so yeah, James yeah, Gunn yeah. is like, he has skill, he has talent. I don't necessarily love the shtick, but it, it connected with a lot of people. So awesome. It's plus one yeah. for the genre. And it's plus one 
for, you know, we, we are rooting for DC. We want DC's house to get in order. And if this show is one step in that direction, I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care, even if it's not my favorite show, I'm glad that it's helping push as the merger takes shape, it's helping push the DC effort forward. Great. I'm I'm fully supportive of that. But I am you said not surprised. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised that, that this <laughs> show really kind of took on the life that it seems to. I, I was the reason why I wasn't surprised, Brian, because everywhere I read, people love the show. That there, there were some people that say shared the same sentiment as we did. Um, but we find ourselves at the opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to certain films or shows that we tend to like and the majority tend to like and those people who didn't like and we don't understand why and they have their reasons and it's fine um but yeah peacemaker uh it did its thing on hbo max and um uh again is a positive for the for the genre so that's cool uh, I'll, and again, I'll be watching season two just to see where it goes. Um, but um, I'm always going to look at it with a questionable look <laughs> as I yeah. watch it. It also, you know, James Gunn obviously has a second series that he's working on for uh, Warner Brothers and DC. It makes me wonder if when he's done with Guardians 3, if that will be the last we see of James Gunn movie filmmaker i wonder if the success of peacemaker will basically because i i believe i read james gunn is now directing every episode of season two of peacemaker which he did not direct every episode of season one is james gunn now going to be a tv creator i wonder if this show kind of has going to officially swing him just to fully that side of the fence and he just becomes almost like the czar a little bit of, of dc tv going forward i'm, I'm curious like there's a feel of that, at least. Yeah. We'll see, man. I just, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, because DC still in in the frame of thought of doing, you know, letting directors do their own thing with these characters. Um, and you might have a I, few like fiefdoms, right? You clearly have a Matt Reeves territory that nobody can. That that thing's got like. Yeah. Yeah militarized guard around and nobody can kind of trespass jj abrams the momentum there appears to have gone a little bit quiet but he clearly exists as a mastermind of some piece of this universe and now gone with multiple series plus a film you know with some momentum now with a hit show you know in a way like suicide squad wasn't a hit film right he, he did need a hit and now he has a hit so i wonder if that will make him a bigger I don't know, maybe he's, maybe he's the comedy guy. I don't know, he's like a bigger presence now in, in the overall universe. Yeah. Uh, next up, listen, this is the truth about Patrick Stewart in Doc Strange 2. He's in this movie. No, I didn't ask my source. I don't need to ask my source. He's in this movie. And people who ask Patrick Stewart I think they asked him recently and he like, oh, so many people have tried to imitate my voice. And it's like, he doesn't want to answer. He's not, he didn't confirm nor deny that he's in the film. But it's Patrick Stewart. Why ask him the question? Um, now, is this Patrick Stewart in the Illuminati? I think so, right? I think we can safely assume that to be the case. Who are the rest of the, the, the Illuminati? We don't know. But um, it's definitely that, that, that small line that they gave him is already got you hooked. Maybe we should tell him the truth. And we look at each other and say, what is the truth? What truth are you telling? This is brilliant, Brian. This is brilliant because the multiverse of madness has an abundance of questions and whatever truth that we hear if they even decide to give him the truth whatever truth we hear may, may be a small answer to uh, uh to many questions that we may have of this movie 
Um, Brian, your thoughts on Patrick Stewart um, neither conforming nor denying um, he's, his involvement in this film and uh, the rest of the cameos, I think we've had our concerns about too many cam cameos. Is this the shtick now, now that No Way Home has killed it in the box office without China? Is this the thing that they, the device that they use to bring people into the, the, the theaters to make them react and, 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 and yell and scream? Your thoughts? Well, I think, look, I mean, Patrick Stewart's a wily veteran of all things superhero. Um, he's been with this genre since before the genre became, you know, what it is today. He's just messing with you, man. Like, <laughs> You think he cares, man? At this point in his career, he's done everything. He yeah, yeah. He's having fun. So yeah, like, of course. When I see him give an answer, his being, he's giving you a playful answer. Look, use your head. Legally, they can't just walk around playing clips of Patrick Stewart in a trailer, right? So, like, clearly, there was some vetting and approval that went through to make that happen. So, obviously, it is him mm -hmm. in some form. Um, and I think... You know, he, he's savvy enough that he's probably aware of, like, what Andrew Garfield went through and what Charlie Cox went through. So he's just, like, he's just messing with you. He's above it yeah. all. He, you know, it's like, he wasn't going to give you the Jonathan Majors, I'm going to I'm gonna choke this off <laughs> question and never talk about it. Yeah, yeah. He's going to have fun with it, you know? Yeah. But, but, yeah, I think the thing, that, the thing that Multiverse affords here is that, as you said, it doesn't have to be the Patrick Stewart of X-Men, of Brian Singer X-verse that we had. You can you can have any variant of Charles yeah. Xavier that you want in this. And I, and, and I think that's probably part of the attraction to someone like a Patrick Stewart or a Hugh Jackman or whoever, is if you're going to come back and put in a couple days work and, and dust off the character that you're loved for, do it with a little spice and a little twist, you know? And I think that's, if I had to guess, yeah, this is not going to be the Patrick Stewart of, you know, X2 that we're, that we're getting here. This is going to be a little bit, you know, drawn from the comics elsewhere. And they're just giving you sort of this friendly, you know, familiar face for it. But it, it doesn't matter because the bigger picture issue is the introduction of mutants into the MCU. And like, it kind of doesn't matter what form that takes, takes in a way. Yeah. It's just once they officially cross you know, that Rubicon and we're there and we're not dancing around the issue anymore. That's what really matters. And so I feel like Patrick Stewart's presence in the movie is more symbolic from that perspective. It's like, if he is the first physical manifestation of a true mutant that we all know in some form, even if it's a variant form, you know, then we're on the lookout for what comes next. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, as far as cameos, Wolverine, there's a rumor that yeah. he's in this film. Um, do you think we'll get Hugh Jackman Wolverine? And if so, I mean, they've, they, they've done a fantastic job of keeping that under the wraps. Because um, it's possible they, make, they may make Wolverine or Hugh Jackman look like, don't worry, Hugh, you don't have to work out. Don't work out. We'll make you. You gonna look dope. You gonna look dope. Don't worry about it. That's a good incentive for him because he didn't want to work out. He's what sixty. He ain't gonna work out hard to to look as good as he did in Days of Future Past. He was days on that. Um, or are we gonna get a new Wolverine? Your thoughts? You know, on the one hand, it'd be a little. It would be a little jarring if in the same film you had Patrick Stewart some form of Charles Xavier and then you had a different Wolverine like if you had them in the same movie that would be a little bit a little bit weird for people maybe they want to drive home the multiverse differences mm -hmm. um, I agree with you if it is Hugh Jackman there's no need for him to be like in super buff shape because Wolverine as we know plenty of time spent in normal clothes you know yeah and, yeah. and, and he breaks his claws out even when he's just wearing his you know blue jeans and plaid shirts and stuff so yeah, yeah no, no no problems with that um i think this is a little less likely to be honest um 
I guess I would be surprised if we got kind of like mutants or X-Men on mice in the same film. You know, it almost feels like they'd want to give you like a taste, a little intro. And so maybe Professor X or Illuminati Professor X is the best way to do that. Wolverine, I know they've danced around it. Right? We know from um, Falcon and Winter Soldier clearly made very clear allusions to or, you know, to Wolverine existing. Um the other rumor, I don't know if you've seen this, is that Taron Edgerton, have you followed this? The Yeah, he's been working out. The workout photos that he's been putting out and people saying, like, is that a clue to, like, he's getting he's getting kind of jacked up to, to go play? You, you, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, it's a little young for my taste. That's not really the style. And, like, that's a pretty youthful Wolverine. And I always think of Wolverine as pretty grizzled. Like, I think you actually want... Like, this is not one where you... You know, Hugh Jackman's 60, okay, we're, or sorry, in his 50s, we're pushing it. Mm -hmm. But I think this is not one where you want a 20-something actor. I think you want somebody kind of between 30 and 40 who almost, like, is 33 but looks 43, if that yeah. makes sense. And yeah. uh, I think that's kind of the look you want. I mean, Taron Edgerton, obviously, like, his stock as an actor has gone way up following the Elton John portrayal and he's won a Golden Globe. You know, he's, he's got some real acclaim in a way that when he was in Kingsman, he didn't, but it's not quite the look or the aesthetic that I would have imagined, you know, Wolverine to ever have. Um, and like his, his physique is fine, but it's not like amazing either. It's sort of like, if you look at it, it's sort of like he's fit. But yeah. he's not like Wolverine has some bulk to size to him. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if he quite has that. I mean, there's those people who feel like he needs to be short, like comic book accurate, like five three and a short guy. I mean, I don't think it's that important. Uh the height situation. Obviously, he can't be six foot five. No. Right? Yeah. He can't be, you know, but again, Zach McGowan. <laughs> that's, Brian, the that's the guy that that's the guy that it makes sense to me. That's the guy that makes sense. He has the grizzled look. He has the hair. He can fight. He can talk. He has the look, man. He has the total package of Wolverine. There's no other choice out there. That Some people were saying uh, Daniel Radcliffe. It's like, come on, guys. Rad Daniel Radcliffe? Really, yo? I don't think Daniel Radcliffe... Daniel Radcliffe's choices as an actor would suggest to me he doesn't want to that's not something he wants to do. Yeah, and, and, I mean, he's doing he's, he's doing Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> Come on. He's not going to do Wolverine. And, and the demand that is required for that character in terms of how he needs to look, how he needs to be, and how popular and how well accepted he has to be. Because you, if you fail with Wolverine, you're heading down ooh, an un, probably unrecoverable situation. Well, this is so. This is also why I think Henry Cavill has no interest in it, because I think, and I know he's obviously somebody that people, because of his physique and because yeah. he's he's kind of dark hair, they they put forward that he could do. That. He's brooding, obviously, in The Witcher, but I think Cavill's side, in his camp, would say there's more downside to him putting himself up for this role than not, because the Superman thing didn't go the way it was supposed to. And if he does this and he's following a pretty beloved portrayal in Hugh Jackman and he doesn't live up to that as the next guy, like that's for a guy whose career is like, as we've discussed, he's, you know, the Witcher is really his breakthrough, but he's kind of been knocking on the door to superstardom, but quite pant hasn't quite cracked it. That's a tough one to come back for. I think it's more, you know, it's more, the McGowan argument is more interesting because it's more suitable to a guy like that, where it's like, less household name a guy who doesn't come in with with quite honestly the baggage of his resume where it's yeah. like i can just step in nobody expects anything and like whether i if i can make this my own it can it can work uh in a way that people don't expect in a way that's you know like ledger was a more accomplished actor when he took on the joker but i think that helped him in the sense of like nobody would have put heath ledger on jack nicholson's level as an actor when he took on the part and nobody would have had the expectation for what his betrayal would become so it gave him this freedom to then yeah. when he showed up to be like holy moly he transformed into something i could never imagine i think that's the template for a great wolverine here right? a known actor is not re a really known actor is probably <laughs> not the right call 
for this. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you 100%. And I hope to do one a, a show where we're casting the X-Men and we could just dedicate a show on doing that because I have a list of... of, of so to I that think, point, though, a, what a known actor is good for is a cameo. So that's why I think if it's... If he's in this movie, it's probably Hugh because Hugh's the known actor and we make Correct. the cameo work. If it's Correct. a new guy that you want to introduce that has no pedigree, this is almost a disservice to have yes. him pop up for 30 seconds in this movie. That exactly. Yes, yes. Doctor Strange 2 Toy Leaks. Brian, I don't know if you saw... Did you see the toys? Uh, so I, in this case, it's... <laughs> The toy leak is like in the text that's on the toys. Like it's like okay. the Doc Strange toy line has a pair. They always have a paragraph, right? Of like what the character's doing in the movie. Mm -hmm. And it mentions that he gets help from specific Avengers friends. And so <laughs> is listed on this. Sp is listed on this. Uh, I forget who else. Is it Black Widow? There, there's, there's, like, there, there's only a select few. Wow. And you're kind of like, oh man, really? Like we're gonna we're gonna give this away in in sort of this form. But anyway, it does specifically say who is helping him in this film and are the two big names that are you know mentioned as being I'm gonna bleep it out for the show for you guys. I'm gonna bleep it out. Uh so it doesn't spo it doesn't spoil it for you, but that's a, that's upsetting, man. Um if that is the case that these characters are going to show up, but that's, it's that's terrible yeah. either way. So yeah. if it's a, if it's a Deke and this is a fake, I think that's, that's just as awful to like, you're selling, <laughs> you're selling the toys and telling people that's what's in the movie. And it's not, <laughs> too. if you're giving away a secret of that scale, yeah. especially if, like I said, I mean, if it's, if it's not the actor's, if it's different actors, right? If it's like variant versions of these characters, that's also like, why give that away in, in, in a throwaway line that's on a toy package? Like that's that's every bit as bad. I am so anti-toy when it comes to these films because they <laughs> constantly spill yeah. the beans on, on, yeah. on key information, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, We'll talk about Star Wars in a second, but I want to get through the Marvel stuff. Yeah. So Brie Larson says the Marvels is bonkers. I didn't read the, the article, Brian. Did you read the article? Did. Yeah, I and did. What uh, specifically did she say? Did she describe what makes it bonkers or... Not really. I think she was, you know, she spent most of the most of the interview. She was really playing up Nia DaCosta, who's the director who stepped in, ah. it changed directors, right, for from directors from uh, Captain Marvel one, and so she was really kind of singing the praises of Nia DaCosta's vision and what it was like to work with her. You know, I don't know that it was necessarily shade at the first one, but she was kind of trying to say that this was a better experience, maybe a you know, a interesting, more, yeah, a more creative experience. And then she used that as a segue to say, like, the script is bonkers. That was her word. And I wish I could share more of kind of like why I feel that way. But, you know, it just, she seems pretty psyched. She seems pretty fired up that, you know, in the second run, she, even though I feel like she's kind of being downshifted a little bit in the promotion because they're, get, you know, we're putting the Monica Rambo, we're putting um, Kamala Khan, like we're, we're putting other characters, the Marvels is clearly plural, right? There's other characters that are being elevated alongside her to help drive her movie. Uh, she seems to be pretty fired up that like this movie is an improvement over the first one, which it better be. It, it needs to be, it needs to be. Because the box office would really fall off on this if the second oh, yeah. one was just like the first, because that first one got such a- I think it'll fall off anyway. Tailwind on the, it may. Yeah. But the pressure's on. Like this, this that movie got such a tailwind from the Avengers kind of culmination. Mm -hmm. Like this movie's gonna stand on its own. So we're gonna find out how much audiences really like this character and, and how it's being portrayed. The one thing I hope to see in the Marvels is Blue Marvel. I hope to see that character in this film. 
Um, I think that's very possible, right? Like, well, yeah, of course. The muscles, right? Exactly. That would be a very appropriate exactly. place. To but it, it would need to be followed up. What I think, especially because I think his story, his origin story, is very, very interesting, and I think it'll. It, I think it would play well in in the theater, and and, it, and it'll do well. It, it's a very fascinating, and especially to me. Um, his origin story and how he becomes um, Blue Marvel and what he's asked to do um, uh, in that storyline. But I hope to see that, man. Yeah, I, hope... look, I mean, look, one thing Marvel knows, Marvel the company knows, yeah. that we are definitely going to keep seeing is the backdoor launch of characters they're really of course. Have, right? When you look at the Black Panther in Civil War, when you look at Tom Holland in Civil War, like, the, the Marvel knows that's in the playbook. Whenever they have somebody new that they want to really kind of springboard, yeah, you yeah. bring them in as the third or fourth character in an established property, have them steal some scenes, and then off they go on their own franchise. So 100%. Yeah. Cool. And obviously, you know, Miss Marvel's getting her own show before this movie, so she gets a launch. You know, Monica Rambeau's gotten her sort of supporting role, so people are familiar with her. Yeah, absolutely. If they want Blue Marvel, put him in the put him in this movie and launch him into his own franchise. It's it, it's not that hard. Yeah. Uh, next up, Blade is uh, shaping up. Uh, we got some uh, casting announcements. Um, I forget the names, but we got a cast for uh, the Chameleon, right? Yeah, there's um, uh, is it? There's uh, Aaron. Aaron Pierre, right? That's, yes, yes, that, yes. That, that's that's the chameleon. Yeah, I believe. Also, I believe Devil Lendo, right? Yeah, we've known he was he was going to be a co lead in in this. Yeah, which is really exciting. I think he obviously had a very successful career for a long time, and then I think in the in the Five Bloods, kind of people remembered. Oh, right, Delroy Lindo, one of the better no, actors, yeah, the he's, underrated he's, actors of our yes, time. So yes, yes, he's he's great. Pretty cool. Yeah, he's great. Um, so that show that movie is 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 shaping up we don't I, I don't assume they still working probably on the script right yeah and i would say we also know that um we also know that kid harrington obviously will be in that movie in some yes capacity. black knight will have yes just given what we know from returnal so you've got you got some pretty uh pretty quality quality actors but like actors still with room to grow i think you know away from like <laughs> what they're known for right it's like kid harrington is still Jon Snow, right? He doesn't yeah. have that second yeah. role quite yet. So we hope yeah. it's this. Mahershala does. I think for Mahershala, it's much more uh, it's much more like a mainstream return because he obviously was the villain in Luke Cage, but I don't necessarily think like that necessarily got the acclaim that maybe he was hoping or they were thinking, even though people will get a chance to see that um, again, you know, as yeah. it seems like. Or, yeah. or on Disney Plus, excuse me, but, but he's uh, obviously won two Oscars, right? The guy doesn't need yeah. exactly to prove himself as an actor. So yeah, um, so yeah, man, Blade is shaping up, and 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 that world of vampires and and other mystical, crazy monsters and stuff like that is opening up, and I definitely think it's still in this early stage, but. Um, you know, um, I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops. Um, again, my Herschler has big shoes to fill. Uh, uh, Brian, I don't know if we've talked about this in the past, but do you think there was some talk between Marvel and Wesley Snipes? Feels like a variant cameo to me. Doesn't feel like they you think? Ask, doesn't feel like a bring him back in a full capacity I oh think. yeah no 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 i mean yeah. because in the beginning there was this, he, the way he made it sound was as if there was talks of him reprising the role as blade then mahershala got announced he i don't think he was in the room where the sausage gets made i don't know if you know that reference from hamilton yeah. but <laughs> when they made that that, that decision um so there was there were people waiting for wesley's response on that announcement and he took it you know he he, he, yeah. he played it cool and you know he he was happy for mahershala but it, the way it made it sound as if it, it, it the way that he made it sound as if they, they had some sort of conversations him and marvel whatever the case may be and they decided um, to go yeah. the other way 
but just, um, yeah, it, it just I just think like you know I mean Wesley Snipes played Usher I mean helped Usher in the era that we're in now, but I just think from an age perspective, even though yeah, the youngest guy, I just think like it's not really viable to have Wesley Snipes. Of course, foundation. Of course. Played. Uh, by the way, one correction: we we mixed up our roles here. Uh, Chameleon is in the other casting announcement. We don't know who Aaron. Yes, is Chameleon is goes with the yes. Raven. Sorry, I screwed that up. Um, Aaron Pierre's role totally unknown. Cool looking guy though. But if you Google him, he's got a very distinctive look. Yes, um, and voice. What, yes, exactly. So I'm pretty curious to see what he's going to be doing in the, in this series or in this yeah. Movie. And yeah, and uh, I listen it, when I watched Spider Man the animated series. Uh, the comedian was one of those guys that that seemed to always get away, <laughs> and it was always he was always fun to watch. Uh, hopefully, they make his character dope. So if we're talking uh, about Craven. So if we're talking about Craven. I, is does that make Chameleon an ally of Craven in this movie or an enemy? Like, because I don't know villains. the history. They're both villain. They're both yeah. Spider Man villains. But I'm assuming this movie, since this movie is Craven centric, I'm assuming similar to like Morbius or Venom, we're supposed to sort of root for Craven in this movie. So is he hunting know. Chameleon or is Chameleon helping him with the idea that I would think somewhere down the road when they meet Spider Man, I, I don't think either one of them is going to be on Spider Man's side. Yeah, I mean, Chameleon, to me, the way I look at Chameleon and Craven, those guys are guns for hire. So you, you hire them to, to do a job. Okay. Um, a comedian is one of those guys is probably a spy, one of those guys that you get to get into on stuff. And, and I think that's probably what his uh, use case has always been. Um, so I don't know what this Craven movie is going to end up being. I don't they picked uh, up a couple of they picked up a couple of I'm going to mispronounce the chameleon actors. Uh, uh, name here. Uh, because it has kind of a he has kind of a long he has kind of a long name right fred oh, yeah. fred Hecken, heckinger or hetchinger he's he was in the white lotus but fred heckinger is yes chameleon but the other thing is um isn't uh russell crowe in this too yes he is yes we he don't is. know who he's playing correct Russell Crowe has gone back to the genre, so Jarrell has now switched <laughs> over to the Spider Verse. Yeah, and that's pretty notable. Um, yes, yes. And you know, and the director is the pretty good director. Like J.C. Chander um, did Triple Frontier, um, did Margin Call. Like he's done some good stuff. I wouldn't say he's done like you know anything where you're like, hey, this is a, a forever classic, but. You know, this this there's at least a whiff of interest here. I think they're gonna have to sell me on this movie because they're gonna have to sell me on Aaron Taylor Johnson. Paul First, Chris. yes, yes. I think yes. until I see it and hear it, I'm not truly believing in this. But I agree. I agree. There are some people that are higher on Aaron Taylor Johnson and 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 that his casting for that for for that role. Uh, but I'm gonna wait and see. I'm gonna wait and see what this is gonna look like. Um, Craven is a dope character, man. Yeah. And I hope they do him justice. Um, but let's see. Um, our final topic on for Marvel. Um, so the Marvel Netflix series is leaving Netflix soon in March, correct? Yeah, all the international market. It's already. I think it's already. Yeah, leaving all the international, leaving kind of worldwide. It's going off Netflix and starting to migrate back to Disney Plus. But uh, from what I heard, it was going to Disney Plus in Canada. Uh, I believe that's right. It's a I think it's ultimately coming everywhere, but it's like a staggered, like, coming back. Starting starting March 16th, I think, is when we first have it. Do you think they end up on Disney Plus, or do you yeah. think they go to Hulu? Oh. We got we, we got heads rolling in some of these, in these, in these, in these, in these, these episodes. But they have that, <laughs> yeah, that's true. They do have it's, that star, they have that designation they use for the adult content on Disney Plus. And then we we all Charlie Cox also has a fairly recent quote where he he clearly knows something else yeah. now. What'd he say? 
he just said like he just said like i know a little bit of what is planned and what's going on and it's a something like he kind of was pretty cryptic but almost clear in sort of saying like they're now in on the plan these guys so i think him did not feel like they are part they're now in the room in a way that probably for no way home they probably or for hawkeye they probably were not they were probably given more limited like we're bringing you back this is what we're bringing you back for now mm -hmm. i think they're privy to what the broader plan is i'm actually gonna say good question i'm actually gonna say yes i'm gonna say they put them on disney plus with a designation that it's adult content i think it goes to hulu, hulu plus because you can't you can't put <laughs> punisher <laughs> too, too much violence too much you, violence. you you can't put punisher there yo and luke cage bushmaster did some crazy stuff man True. <laughs> you you just can't do it. You just can't do it. Okay. I think Disney takes a big big risk in doing so. Okay. So I think it's gonna go to Hulu Plus. I mean Hulu. Um John Watts, a very popular man as of late. Holy moly. <laughs> very he, rich man as of late. Oh, oh, too. oh yeah, oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. He's doing he, he yeah, he's he's I don't know doing what his he, back end was, but I'm I'm sure I'm he had sure. back end on this. Of course. Of movie. I'm sure he did. So yeah. Um he's doing Fantastic Four. Yep. Right. That's gonna be very interesting. I um I'm hoping to get into some good conversations about that when the rumor mill and the, the actual uh wheels start turning on that 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 movie but he is uh supposedly doing a secret star wars uh series or movie series series serious yeah. that's the that's the room yeah we all know that kevin feige um has shown interest and i believe he is on board on doing uh, or producing a star wars film correct yeah, supposedly it's a film. That's what they've said. Yeah. You think he has some involvement in this in this series? Him and John Watts are cool. Are cool. They they're very John cool Watts now. Is clearly a Marvel. <laughs> John Watts is a Marvel. Look, I mean, but so the the rumor the rumored we don't know the exact series, but the rumored thrust of the series is it is going to focus on younger actors. It is is, and so the natural segue for Watts is. Tom Holland, Zendaya, you know, Laura Harrier, Jacob Batalon, that he had such success directing younger actors in his Spider-Man movies that it would stand to reason that maybe Kevin Feige was like, hey, if you want to do a Star Wars series with young leads, I got the guy and he's right here. So yeah, I, I wouldn't wouldn't shock me if Kevin was at least an EP on this. Um, I don't know how close he would be if he... And he's definitely been, been more of a movie guy than a, a direct hands-on TV guy. But as we saw with the Disney plus Marvel shows, he still gets his hands dirty with some of these of decisions about what they put in those shows. So yeah, it would not surprise me. I just don't know. I mean, I mean, does John Watts, like, does, does he have variants of himself? Because <laughs> I mean, Fantastic Four is a massive undertaking. The pressure on him to do another Spider-Man movie is going to also be massive. Like, yeah. who walks away from a two billion dollar film and says, "I'm good"? <laughs> Studios generally don't let you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's going to direct a Star Wars series on top of that. It's a lot of work. I mean, that's a yeah, lot. that is that's a lot on the plate. It is. It is. It is. I mean, but but hopefully the the potential of of doing a Jedi Academy. If you're dealing with young actors, you're dealing that's what with got young. Me thinking. When I, you when got, I, said young, I was like, hmm, could you got young be? cadets. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could that be as possible? It's quite possible and, and very interesting. Can you imagine you get like John Watts, Sebastian Stan, Kevin Feige and the, and oh the, and my the God. Ones? Yeah. Oh, that would be, listen, that would be very interesting if they go there. Cause I, I believe they go that route. You're going to have those few that break away and perhaps even get away. And it's again, I think uh, Marvel, I'm not sorry, not Marvel, but Disney 
and the Star Wars franchise are setting themselves up for the future. And I think you have to sort of set the foundation of from the past to then jump forwards. Um, and it'll be interesting if they go about it that that way. Um, let's see. Let's see what else we hear from this 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 development with Watch. The other thing uh, that got me like got the radar up a little bit about something Jedi Academy um, maybe being in the works is that Adam Driver of all people when he was out promoting I think it was Last Duel or House of Gucci recently got asked about playing Kylo Ren again and like this is a he's like a notorious act for man like a pretty finicky guy yeah and he was like he definitely left the door open to coming back and doing it and I was like, why do you think that is well that's what made me wonder like what the circumstances under which that would be appropriate could be a jedi academy show where he's not it's a younger version of himself to start but by the end it could be him like it could be him actually him mm -hmm. um and it just made me wonder like when he gave that answer it seemed like unusually forthright for a guy of that nature to kind of be that open about it it made me wonder if he, if there's been a conversation or if he knows there's at least some movement afoot that may involve Kylo Ren being brought back. And a Jedi Academy show would definitely lead you down the path of yeah, Kylo yeah, Ren coming yeah, back. Yeah. And people, you know, for all the things that people don't like about that, the, the Star Wars sequels, everyone loved that character and his portrayal of it. And so that's one that would probably score some pretty big points with fans and draw some audience if he showed up on a Disney plus, you know, limited series, uh, reprising the, the character. Anyway, it's just something that like, stuck in my head. Like, I think that would be fascinating to see what Kylo Ren was going through in those early years, mm -hmm. um, training and what Luke perhaps may have been seeing in him during that time, because we get a glimpse of the crazy looking Luke Skywalker standing over. That was a scary yeah. <laughs> scene. <laughs> um, so yeah, that would be very interesting. Um, our last topic, Paramount seems to have some sort of relationship with Warner Brothers because they did something crazy. They, so they announced, they made an announcement of a movie Without so knowing, did, well, hang on. They gave them. Okay. They gave, they did a whole Paramount Plus kind of like they they basically did their version of like you know investor Disney does like Disney Plus day. They kind of laid out their shows. Okay. Laid out all their plans, all the money they were going to spend on the streamer, i.e., all the money the company was going to lose over the next couple of years to, try <laughs> to get an audience. And then they did this. <laughs> they announced a Star Wars film without knowing if Star the Trek. Yeah, yeah, sorry. They announced a Star Trek film and claiming that the original cast members were going to be in it. And then a few hours later, I guess the, the their represented the cast members represented it start calling up like, yo, I don't know anything about this. They don't know anything about this. What are you talking about? So you know. The negotiating table is going to look very interesting. <laughs> so, Brian, what the what what what, what happened here? Who no who, drew, who so, dropped the ball on this? Well, I mean, obviously Paramount dropped the ball on this, yeah. but so you clearly had an an investor event where they were under pressure to pitch, you know, pitch the market on the Paramount Plus could be a viable streamer. Um, and they decided to, and there's been a lot of talk. Or, or, so this is the Kelvin timeline. This is the Chris Pine, Zach Quinto, Zoe Saldana, um, Simon Pegg. Uh, that it's th this storyline. And, and, and this, right? So this series has been pretty interesting because the first movie was a huge success. Second movie was kind of a disappointment. It was like better reviewed, but the box office stepped down. And then Star Trek Beyond was also better reviewed, but then the box office really fell off. And so then they were kind of left with like, okay, the, the cast is now a lot more expensive. The movies are making a lot less money. 
and we're kind of stuck, which has kind of been a recurring theme of Star Trek as a movie franchise. It's never been the best movie franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TV. So then out of nowhere, after, you know, that movie, look, Star Trek Beyond was probably like 2014, 2015, like already six, seven years removed. They announce we're doing a fourth film in the series. Yeah. Except they forgot to tell <laughs> everyone who would be in the movie that they were in the movie. I mean, so basically Paramount just, I guess, decided to take themselves hostage in, in this negotiation <laughs> because I don't know what leverage they could possibly have. If you're Chris Pine's agent, you're like, well, you just told all of your investors in the public market that you're going to do this. So my client wants X, Y, Z, A, yes. B, C, D, and you're going to give all of that to him. Oh, else this movie doesn't get done. Yeah. Captain Kirk. <laughs> Oh, no. This is going to be very interesting if these guys do come back, Brian. The other, so the big rumor for this movie, the other thing that's really interesting they got, I didn't see get any play, was the rumor was if they did the fourth one, because this was the Kelvin timeline, that Hemsworth was going to be in this movie, that yes. Kirk was going to meet his dad. And we know Chris Hemsworth as a star in the last seven years, what has happened? This guy is now one of the biggest movie stars we have. I don't know how I could possibly afford this cast. Like, to afford this cast and put the effects into this movie, this movie has to yes, be a billion dollar like movie a, to make money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, and now it really is going to need to be a billion dollar because all these guys, are gonna be, <laughs> they're all going to be getting their cut if they do this. And this almost seems like a doomed to fail project to me. The way yeah, the stock, their stock tanked because of uh, some of this. Yeah, well, the amount of money. That, well, again, they're they're losing an enormous amount of money, money to try to get to. I think they're aiming for a hundred million subscribers, and but you know we've talked about it. Paramount Plus, you know they've got a big Star Trek world. They are building a Halo world later this month uh, or next month, and they're building this huge Yellowstone world. Right? There's like I think there's three series now, and then Taylor Sheridan's agreed to do. I have more, which I don't know how they're going to have eight Yellowstone related series, but um, they're, they're trying to build that content. And so yeah. I think they're like, we need a Star Trek film, but man, again, this is, I mean, the budget for this has to be like 200, $250 million just because you're going to be paying $100 million to the cast. Yeah. This little mishap for me um, raises some concerns for me and their judgment. Um, It'll be interesting to see what this Halo show is going to be in terms of a quality and performances from actors. Well, they already made one mistake, which is what green light in the second season. Ah, yes, Judge Dread. I thought the exact same thing. I thought the exact same thing, and I was like, Stallone wouldn't let himself do that movie without his face being seen. And it, it definitely had a negative impact. I mean, that film was pretty silly. But yeah, that yeah, aspect yeah. really annoyed some of the fans. And I read this about that Pablo Schreiber, you're going to see him without his helmet a lot. And I was like, uh-oh. Yeah, it's over. I think for me, it's over. For me, it's over, Brian. I think doing that really uh, takes away the mystique of his character. Almost somewhat similar to Boba Fett. Yeah. Which, you know, Mandalorian, he's taken off his helmet at very select key moments, but like yes. for the most part, keeping the helmet on has been a positive. Correct. And I, you know, in fair, you know, a, a movie in the genre that really, because of the Stallone movie that really got lost in the shuffle, Dread is a good, is I, I think it's a very good movie. The Carl Urban. Yes, yes, yes. I love that he one. Keeps his helmet on. Yes, it's yes, a yes. Very yes, good yes. movie. But like, that's the faithful version. I think when you have a character this iconic, you can't mess with the basics like that. Even I would if the love, actor's like, I want my face to be on screen. You can't do it. I would love a, a, a Carl Urban, that's his name? Yeah. Uh, a Judge Dredd series. He'd I would do love it in that. a second. I, I mean, I he's love. obviously he's obviously doing Billy Butcher and the boys, so he's got yes. his he's got his thing, but Oh, well, by the way, he's in the Star Trek. I forgot. He's 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 a McCoy. He's, yes, the, yes, yes, the Star yes, Trek yes. movie. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but no, Drudge Dredd is his favorite character by far. He would do it in a second. He's, yeah, he's yeah. Said that many times. Yeah. yeah, we'll see what happened with Paramount Plus, man. I'm still looking forward to seeing the offer and how that's going to look and, and be. 
uh, that's one that's really got me interested. A couple of tidbits before we we sign off. Um, Brian, I don't know if you've heard um, the possibility of Seth MacFarlane okay. directing a Naked Gun um, reboot with Liam Neeson. Brian, that is hilarious. <laughs> Brian, that is hilarious. Liam Neeson said this could either ruin me or... An, 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 he's, Leslie, uh, he's Leslie Nielsen? Nielsen, yes. I mean, that is very interesting, man. That I, 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 see, I see the comedy in that already. That this could man. work. You, this you could think, work. Oh, you think it could work? I, oh, yes. I th- I think it could work. I think this is this is perfect in my in my opinion. A serious actor for who knows how long, and now he has to play this dumb guy. As a, this is Seth MacFarlane. Are you killing me? That's gold right there. I'm there. Wow. Can they pull off all those ga- of that era of comedy? Can you do that? I now? think. I think. I th- of course. I think you could do it. Okay. I think you do it. That's going to be hilarious. Um, I think that was my last thing that I wanted to mention. Um, but oh, yeah, that's how... Love- oh, quickly. Yes. Uh, we didn't talk about Thor Love and Thunder. So we, that was the other toy thing that came out. Got it. People are on, people are on the lookout for a trailer because there's, if you look at the timeline relative to the release date, we're in the zone of when Marvel has typically liked to get something out um, to initially promote their, their next film. So there's been some rumors. It could be as soon as this week. Um, you know, we didn't, I have not, I've been looking actually, I have not read of anything that is known to be attached to the Batman, but I would suspect there's at least one big trailer that is meant for comic book fans that will be attached to that movie that we haven't seen yet. Uh, that's typical, uh, but they but the, the Thor four toys appeared uh, this week, and so I think the two things to take from it is is Natalie Portman has a very comics accurate Mighty Thor costume. If you want to, if you go by the toy, yes, full on has like the the silver with the winged helmet and the hammer. Thor has a bright blue getup, kind of. A little different looking, like a, he's got like a blue and gold um, armor that I don't think we had seen and wasn't evident in any of the set photos that we saw for the film. So it's a really different look. He's got his long blonde hair back, and uh, like I said, it's, it's like a royal blue with sort of like almost like lightning, gold lightning kind of pattern across it. So that was that was pretty different looking. Um, but yeah, I would say that in conjunction with some some rumors that a some footage might be coming on that film. So I wonder. You know, I wonder. I wonder if there's a chance that's attached to the Batman. That just got me got me wondering because I was trying to think of what movie they would. You know, Doc Strange two trailer probably will be attached to that, um, but we've already seen it. it obviously, came out already. Um, there's nothing else DC that seems truly ready to go. Black Adam we would be the other obvious one if they had a fuller teaser like something that built on the heroes teaser yeah, that would yeah. be the other thing maybe i'd be on the lookout for with yeah. the batman because that's a dc property aquaman seems too far off i don't think we see that um shazam i haven't heard any talk that there's a trailer in the works there yet um but that's the only other dc thing i could think of that's on the calendar so then i was like yeah maybe so maybe we get be on the lookout maybe thor 4 you see a little something uh, yeah the batman yeah um i'm 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 curious to see what that's going to look like because again this is taika watiti going crazier with this film than what he did with uh thor ragnarok so let's see And you guys already know what we thought about that film not to say that we didn't like it um but it wasn't like in my eyes it wasn't like top five or, or and i don't know if he was even top 10 for me i i'd have to go back to the videotape and see where i got it ranked but it's definitely for me i i don't believe it's a top 10 film i'd have to look back but well, well, you know, i think for both of us a big part yeah. of the way we feel has to do with the hulk choices oh yeah yeah you know, yeah right it's like 
it's not even a reflection on Hemsworth, who I think is actually great in that movie, but it's more a reflection of the using up, seemingly, of the planet Hulk storyline story in that way, in that movie. Yeah. Brian, I hope that you and I can have a conversation solely on the Hulk and what I think needs to change and what I think we need to get back to uh, with the Hulk. I would love a, a the original origin story of the Hulk. I would love to see that. Um, so far, we've gotten the Bill Bixby version of how he became the Hulk, um, but not not the the nuclear the gamma ray the gamma bomb explosion that caused his 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 transformation. To me, that that would be, and and get back to his roots, monster, destruction, and in those moments where he's tamed by what, by who, those are the sort of things, the storylines we have to see. Um, but yeah, that's our show for today. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share with your friends. Um, next week, the Batman. That's all we're going to be talking about. We may talk about some other news, but it will be an afterthought when it comes down to the Batman. There's nothing that's going to compete with the noise that the Batman is going to be making. And I'm looking forward to having those conversations. Um, the next time we talk about the Batman after we've seen it, we'll have a special guest, Mr. Ian Dorian. Hopefully we can get him on the on the call. He was supposed to show up for this call, but he's a busy guy. And I told him I'd rather have him for the Batman because that guy is a wealth of knowledge on the subject. And he has some tidbits that he would like to share regarding the behind the scenes for the, for the movie and for the character that I think that we would find interesting. So... Brian, thank you for joining me once again. And I thank you guys on Nerd Generation for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.